Hey everyone, this video is the next step in our full derivation of the source panel method and vortex panel method. And in this video, we're going to be building more complex flows. So in previous videos, I've gone through elementary flows, such as uniform flow, source flow, and vortex flow. And in this video, we're going to be building up using multiple sources in this case, but you can also do this with vortices for the vortex panel method. And the reasoning behind this will be discussed in the next video titled something like flow around an airfoil. We're going to be starting with the simplest equation, which is uh, due to a single source source, and by the end of this video, you'll see the more complicated equation uh, that includes uh, the sources all around an airfoil in addition to the uniform flow, and hopefully this video will build up and, and fill in some of those gaps in between the simplest case and the more complicated case. So we're going to start with a single source over in the schematic colored in red. That's point one or source one, and what we're trying to find is the velocity potential at point P down here in blue due to this source one. And so the distance between P and one is called R1P. So one is the source, P is the point at which we're trying to find the velocity potential. And the equation for the uh, velocity potential due to a uh, source flow is given in this equation. So phi sub P is equal to lambda one over two pi times the natural log of the distance between the point P and the source. Now we're just going to add one more source to this. So uh, in the schematic here, you can see again point P. This is source one. This is source two. This has a source strength of lambda one, source strength of lambda two. Distance between these points is R1P. Distance between these points is R2P. And we're going to just use the principle of superposition to add the influence of each source on point P. So uh, the velocity potential at point P is due to the uh, sum of the uh, first source and the second source. And so we can write that simply as the first source from the previous slide, or from the previous whiteboard, plus the second source. And so the next logical step is just to add in a bunch of sources. And we'll say we're adding in n sources. And so here again, you can see uh, source 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to n. And the distance between uh, these sources and point P is going to be r1p, and then dot dot r4p, and then here rnp. And we'll call these sources, uh, we'll index them with the letter i. And so we're going to again use superposition and we're going to sum from i is equal to 1 all the way to i is equal to n. So we can say phi p is due to the influence from 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 plus n. And so we can just write this as a summation. So phi p is equal to a summation from uh, i is equal to 1 to n of lambda i over 2 pi times the natural log of r i p. So up to now we've been using discrete sources with strength capital lambda. But now let's draw a curve from A to B. So I'm starting at A and I'm drawing a curve all the way to B. And this curve now has infinite sources with uh, the strength varying along the curve, uh, lambda as a function of S, where S is the distance progress variable from A to B. Uh, note that this is actually a uh, strength per unit distance. The position from point P to the curve will also vary with s because the distance from point p to a is going to be different from point p to b and everywhere along this curve. Uh, so we can call that rp uh, as a function of s. And so the way that we can get the velocity potential induced at point p from this curve is phi p is equal to integral. So we're going to integrate from a to b. And the integral this in the integral is the same as all the summations, but now we have uh, lowercase lambda, which is a function of s, over 2 pi times the natural log of the distance from the point p to the curve at any one point. So that's rp as a function of s. And we're integrating over ds. So we just did the smooth curve. And now what we're going to do is break up this smooth curve into two separate flat panels. And the panels are going to be called ab and bc. And so if you look at this schematic down here, you can see panel ab is a flat straight line. Panel bc is another flat straight line. Uh, and we're trying to find the velocity potential induced at point p. Uh, you can also see the distance progress variable along ab here, along BC here. Uh, the uh, source strength per unit distance for AB is lambda SAB, and for BC is lambda SBC. And again, even though that these are flat panels, the distance between the point P and at any point along the flat panels, that distance will change uh, for both of these, which is why we have RP as a function of that distance progress variable. So what we're going to do here is the same thing that we did for the individual discrete sources. We're just going to add the two, in this case, integrals, to get the total contribution to phi P. So we're going to say that phi P 
is equal to phi AB, so that's the contribution from this panel, plus phi BC, the contribution from this panel. And so we're just gonna write it here. First one, integral from A to B of that uh, source strength per unit distance over two pi times the natural log of that distance integrated over the entire distance between the two uh, panel endpoints. And then we're just gonna add in the same thing for BC. So on the previous whiteboard, we only used two panels, but what happens if we have N-flat panels? So uh, you can see the schematic here is very similar to the previous whiteboard, just with some variables renamed. And now we're gonna call each panel with an index J, as opposed to calling it A, B, B, C, C, D, etc. And so you can see, again, schematic's very similar, but the variables are a little bit different. So first panel here, that's J is equal to one. Second panel here, J is equal to two. This continues around for whatever amount of panels, N panels. The distance progress variable along a panel is SJ, so that's the same for both of them. Uh, we have the source strength per unit distance is lambda J, which is still a function of SJ because the source strength can change along each of these panels. And then the distance between point P and whichever point we're integrating at uh, is RPJ, which is still a function of SJ because this distance changes along the panel. And so what we can do is just uh, use the principle of superposition again and just do a summation of each of these panels. And so we have the velocity potential induced at point P due to all of these panels is equal to uh, phi uh, of J is equal to one plus phi of J is equal to two dot 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 phi of J is equal to N. And so this is what we had from before, this integral uh, over each of the panels, and now we're just gonna be integrating over J. So for one single panel, we have the integral over J of lambda J S J over two pi times the natural log of that distance uh, integra integrated over D S J. But now since we wanna do all the panels, we're just gonna sum from J is equal to one to N. Now, for my derivations of the source panel method and the vortex panel method, uh, we're going to assume that the source strength is constant on each panel, but can change between panel to panel. So what that means is before we wrote this as lambda j as a function of sj. So that was for this panel, lambda j was a function of the distance progress along this panel. So that was before. Now what I'm saying is that we have a lambda j for this panel, but it's not changing with SJ. We have another lambda J for this panel, not changing with SJ, but this lambda J can be different from this lambda J. And so we can simplify down this equation by saying that this is no longer a function of the panel distance. So when we integrate, it's just gonna be a constant over that panel. So we can take this out of the integral. We can also take the two pi out of the integral because that's a constant. And so we have phi P is equal to the summation from J is equal to one to N. We've taken this term out. So we have lambda J over two pi. And now we have the integral over the panel of the natural log of the distance between point P and the point on the panel uh, integrated over the panel. And so this is actually equation 3.144 in Anderson. So let's look at the big picture really quick. This is the equation from the previous whiteboard. And this equation solves for the velocity potential phi at a single point P due to N panels, where each of these panels has a constant but not necessarily equal strength. And so if we wanna solve for an entire flow field, for example, like a CFD grid, right, you have discrete points that you're solving for, we would need to solve this equation at every single desired grid point. So here's what you've all been waiting for, and that's how do we get the flow around an airfoil? Well, what we're gonna do is approximate the airfoil with N panels. We've just built up all of these uh, different scenarios from the previous whiteboard boards and we've landed on that last final one which is a summation from j equals 1 to n uh, over n panels and so what we're going to do is build up an airfoil so this is an approximation of an airfoil that has six panels with strengths lambda 1 all the way to lambda 6 we have just an arbitrary point p out here and nothing's going to happen if we have no uniform flow so if i just have something sitting in the air and there's no uniform flow uh, it's not really interesting so we're going to add a uniform flow uh, at a certain angle of attack this is just zero for right now and so the velocity potential induced at point p right here is going to be equal to the uh, summation of the uh, velocity potential due to the uniform flow and the velocity potential due to the uh, panels or the integration of the panels. And so that's given down here. These are from, or this is from a previous video. So we have phi P is equal to the uniform flow contribution and then also the previously derived uh, source flow contribution from all the panels. And so phi P is not a velocity, it's a velocity potential, but we can find the velocity by taking the derivatives with respect to x and y if we want to get the x and the y velocities. So the x velocity at point P is equal to d phi P 
dx, and the y velocity at point P is equal to d phi P dy. So let's say you've defined your geometry with a certain number of panels, and we're gonna say, okay, I know my free stream velocity v infinity, I know my angle of attack, this is what I want, and let me just add in some random numbers for the source panel strengths. Odds are, unless you're the world's best guesser, you will get flow that does not make sense for the geometry you're looking at. You're gonna get flow that goes through the airfoil, coming out of the airfoil, that's not really great. So the crux of this method is really how do we solve for the panel strengths such that given the conditions that we've described here, the flow over the airfoil is correct. And so that discussion and explanation is the topic of my next video. So stay tuned for that and thanks for watching.